What's going on guys? It's Corey from Super Comic Guru 9000 and welcome to my exciting review of Bleach Chapter 502. Also, if you guys are interested, Christian and I just finished work on one of our very first short films, Why Won't It Open? If you guys are looking for a quick little laugh and you want to look at some of the stuff that we've been working on, you should check out the video in an annotation above. It's really funny and I hope you guys enjoy it. The invasion in Soul Society continues this week as things continue to get rocked for the Shinigami and the Quincy are attacking, and this is just another chapter that I just really, really loved. And, uh, you know, not a lot happened, but a lot of really important things happened. Now, we actually get to pick up again from last week where Asnod is fighting against Byakuya and Renji, and we can see that Byakuya is pretty much screwed at this point. He is just bleeding, he's hurt, he can't really do anything. And this is when Renji goes into a blind rage and just starts attacking him with his Zabimaru and everything. But of course it ends up not being able to do anything. While all of this is going on though, we actually go over to another portion of Soul Society where we get to see that Rukia is hanging out and she's sensing that something is not quite right about her brother. And it seems like she's getting ready to go and help him. That is unfortunately before she is attacked by an unknown assailant. At this point in time, Rukia is down, Renji is down, and even Byakuya is down here. And this is when we get one of the biggest revelations of this chapter, and it is by no means an official confirmation quite yet, because I don't know if I want to believe it quite yet. But uh, we actually get to see the leader of the Quincy, and one of his uh, other assistants is standing there, and they're talking about Byakuya, and they even state that he is dead. If he is dead, this is a huge deal for the series, but... Still, our spirits are picked up immediately afterwards because we finally get the reintroduction of one of the coolest and my favorite Shinigami characters from Bleach, Kenpachi. That's right, Kenpachi the Rapist is back. Kenpachi the man, the master, the beast. This guy is such a badass and he has quite an entrance, I gotta say. He actually has two Quincy draped over his shoulder with his sword impaled through both of them. And again, this is just showing that Kenpachi is just a complete and total badass. And it looks like he's actually going to try and go up against the Quincy leader. So I don't even think I need to say it. This was a 10 out of 10 chapter. Um, just everything about it was just so super intense. You know, last week we had that awesome battle with Asnot and Byakuya. And it ended on sort of a cliffhanger with uh, Byakuya being attacked by his own Senbon Zakura. And uh, it was just, it was insane, you know, and they're stating that Byakuya is dead. That's a really huge deal. Although since the Quincy are the ones that are stating it, I'm not quite sure if it's true yet. Um, the thing with Rukia being attacked and everything, that sort of caught me off surprise, but I really can't see her character being killed. Uh, same thing goes for Renji. I still feel that they have a lot more to do in the actual series. But everybody's going to be talking about Ken Pachi this week, which, damn, what an entrance. That is just completely badass. Uh, you know, at first I thought he only had one huge Quincy on his back, but as I observed again, of course he had two. And one of those Quincy's just looks completely ridiculous. He almost looks like some sort of, like, weird half-man, half-beast creature. I can't quite tell. He has claws and he has some obvious fur on his arms. But uh, we, we didn't really get a good look at some of the other Quincy in the battle and everything. But uh, I cannot wait to see Kenpachi fight against some of these guys. You know what? Kenpachi is kind of the key here. Uh, since he's, you know, can only use his sword, it's constantly in its release state, you know, he can't really use his Bonkai or anything. So, uh, the fact that he's, you know, so powerful and everything is perfect, he's able to take on these Quincy. And just to show that he's taken out two of them immediately without really looking like it was too much trouble for him, just more badassery from his part. So, I cannot wait to see the next chapter where we're going to get to see Kenpachi hopefully just go completely nuts. And I'm really hoping the author isn't going to kill him off because Kenpachi is easily my favorite character in the entire series. The hell, they can make the whole series about Kenpachi. Um, but still, really, really enjoyed this chapter. If you guys are fans of the series, you need to make sure and check this one out. A lot of important stuff go down. We might actually have the death of Byakuya Kuchiki in this chapter. So again, I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. Fantastic artwork. Kenpachi at the end. Byakuya might be dead. Epic shit. All right, guys, you know that I clearly really enjoyed this chapter, but what about you guys? Did you enjoy this week's chapter of Bleach? And also, do you think that Byakuya is dead, or do you think this is simply a ruse by the Quincy? You can let me know with your comments below. And as always, guys, remember, if you like this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. That concludes this review today, guys. Super Comic Guru 9000, out.